All right, so here we are uh, <clears throat> with my review of Godzilla King of the Monsters and my review of Alamo Cinema Draft House. So um, I'll do the re my non-spoiler review of the movie first, and then I will give a review of the Alamo um, uh, Draft House. So without much ado, let's get into it after the cut. So we're back to our normal format for Godzilla King of the Monsters. Um, this is a non-spoiler format where I go over the good, the bad, and the ugly. Um, so let's get to it with the good. So essentially, the good part about this movie is that it is head and shoulders better than Godzilla 2014. Uh, head and shoulders better than Godzilla 2019. Not that it's terrible, um, not that 2014 was bad, it's just this movie is much better. Um, the music is better. They've actually sampled Akira Ifakube and Toho music for some of the monsters, so you actually feel like, oh, shit, uh, you know. <clears throat> they actually paid attention. Overall, this film really, at its core, um, if you want to get down to it, is a big love letter to fans of Godzilla. If you are a Godzilla fan, this this move this movie, Godzilla King of the Monsters, is a love letter to you. It's it's a wow, um, you know we know you grew up watching this shit on Saturday mornings, <laughs> or you know Saturday uh, between you know eleven to like one o'clock on uh, TBS with uh, uh, with Monster Vision with Grandpa Munster. You know, like, <laughs> this is for you, <laughs> right? So, uh, the, the monsters have never looked better. Um, Godzilla, King Ghidorah, uh, Rodan, Mothra, they look great. And they actually, like, they actually look like, they don't look a one-for-one -one ratio, except for Godzilla. He looks pretty similar to what he looks like in, uh, like, more traditional Godzilla looks, uh, the way he looks. But uh, overall, pretty pretty well pretty well put together. Pretty well, uh, the monsters look like what you would imagine them to look like in a more modern take of those those monsters, without being disrespectful to their original design. So, with all that being said, um, that's the good. That's the good. Great music, great monster fights. But we'll have to get to the bad after the cut. <laughs> So <clears throat> the bad of this film is if you're looking for um, if you're looking for some deep uh, you know high level acting uh, <clears throat> you're gonna be shit out of luck. There's only three people in this film that actually three people who act really really well in this film, and one of them is a CGI animated character. So. That's so too. Um, so you know that's kind of a flaw with the that's kind of a flaw with the uh, with the with the, with the uh, with with the film. Uh, kind of a bad thing about it. Um, I can't go further in without spoiling it, but so I'm not going to. But I'll I'll give you other bad things about the film. Um, the writing is. I mean, let, let me put it this way, okay. The writing in Japanese Godzilla films is serviceable. It gets, it moves the plot along from point A to point B. You know, it's not going to win any Academy Awards or anything like that. The writing in this film is worse than okay. The writing in this film is, who boy, uh, even the actors who, who we know can act, we know these people can act. They're having a tough time with this, with this, with this stuff. So, you know, uh, take it or leave it. But here's the thing. If you're watching a Godzilla film, you're not there for the human actors. You're there to see hot monster on monster action. You know, complaining, complaining about bad acting in a Godzilla kaiju film is like saying you want better acting. You want a better plot and a better script in a porno film. No one watches porno for the dialogue. 
all right? <laughs> you know, this, this person really knows how to emote. No one cares about that, <laughs> okay? And that's basically what's going on with a, with a kaiju film. No one's watching. No one's watching a kaiju film for the acting. People watch kaiju films for the action, <laughs> for lack of a better word. So that's the bad. The, the acting, the script is really bad. Even the better actors in the film are just, they can only do so much. But with that being said, let's move on to the ugly after the cut. So now we get to the ugly, and the ugly is, um, how can I put this nicely? The ugly kind of falls into the category of, this film, um, is, I mean, I have a few nitpicks about it. I can't go into the really big ones, because if I did... I would basically be going into spoiler territory. That's kind of like my that's kind of like my uh, my my big thing. But I will give you a general idea uh, of the ugly about this film. Uh, the ugly being my nitpicks or little things, just quirks that bother me. Um, they license the original Akira Ifakube Godzilla theme, but they only do bits and pieces of it in the film, or they remix it. And so it sounds kind of weird, and I'm like, if you're going to do Godzilla's theme, use Godzilla's theme. I mean, it's so fucking iconic. It's like the John Williams score for Superman, or the Danny Elfman score for Batman. It's so fucking iconic, and if you've licensed it, fucking use it. God damn. Um, they also license Mothra's music, um, and... You know, if you're a hardcore fan, you'll you'll know when they start playing uh, Mothra's theme in the in this film, because you you'll, you'll know it. You'll be like, oh, that's Mothra's theme. Oh shit. Um. So overall, um, I'll get to my overall feelings about the film after the cut. So my overall thoughts and segue about the film are this. Uh, basically, the film is really well made. Um. The special effects are top-notch. Godzilla has never looked so good. I now consider this Godzilla to be the definitive modern Godzilla. I don't consider Shin Godzilla to be the, the definitive modern Godzilla. Because Shin Godzilla looked so different from the atypical Godzilla. And his abilities were so out of place of a Godzilla. I just, I can't legitimately say, oh, that's Godzilla. So, with that being said, um, overall... Film is a recommendation for those who are Godzilla fans or who just want to watch a big dumb monster movie where a lot of shit gets destroyed. And the destruction is gratuitous, but in only the best way possible. So, watch it. Um, there will be a brief intermission, and then I will do a review of... Um, my local Alamo Cinema Draft House, after the cut. So, the Alamo Draft House Cinema. Um, they just built this place, like, a f well, they built it late, like, early, like, early this year. Um, they just opened it a few, uh, I want to say a few... A little, a little bit, a little time ago, um, and uh, well, uh, this is the first time I've been to an Alamo Draft House Cinema. Um, I've heard of it. There's one down in, in D.C. There's one in Arlington, Virginia, um, which is basically kind of like D.C., like near the Pentagon and Crystal City. But this one's near me, so I'm going to talk about it a little bit and uh, tell you what I think. So. <clears throat> Alamo Draft House Cinema uh, began in Texas, hence the name Alamo, and basically the big thing about Alamo Draft House Cinema back in the day was that it essentially, um, it, it's, it's more of a, it, it was a theater opened by people who liked movies, um, who liked the idea of going to the movies and watching stuff. So... There's some really cool stuff uh, about it. Um, it's a higher quality film going experience, for lack of a better word. Um, 
basically you go in, you sit, uh, you go in, you buy your ticket. Uh, it's a bit pricier than my local AMC, but fuck it, why not? Um, I prefer some quality with my uh, film going experiences. So essentially, um, you go there, you uh, you uh, buy your ticket, you go into the theater, you sit down. There's you have a little table there. You uh, with cards and pen, you you put a, you write down what you want. A waitress or waiter comes, takes your order, um, brings it to you after a little bit. Um, you pay for it and you watch your movie. Um, they have a, a no talking policy, like you get one warning and after that your ass is gone, which I love. Um, you get a higher quality clientele. You don't have people with a lot of little kids running their fucking mouths, talking all the goddamn time. Uh, man, man, man. People don't, people don't do that. Um, the pricing barrier prevents people from from bringing that shit to this theater, which I love because I fucking hate. Uh, hearing people's little kids in movie theaters. I paid to watch a movie, not hear your fucking kid talk or cry. Um, so yeah, I fucking love it. Fucking love, fucking love the theater. Um, that being said, they also show a lot of legacy films, um, re-showings of older films, which I freaking love. So overall, um, I recommend it. I recommend it. If there's an Alamo Draft House Cinema near you, uh, go get a chance. I wouldn't go there all the time, but you know, every once in a while, totally worth going to. So, with that being said, um, that's the end of my review of Alamo Cinema Draft House, and peace. Well, not peace. Um, I'll do the wrap up after the cut. So, in conclusion. <laughs> In conclusion, uh, Godzilla, King of the Monsters, nice summer flick to watch. I think they released it at the right time now that uh, uh, Endgame is starting to fizzle out a little bit. Um, this can come in and kind of uh, get that other crowd. Um, and, uh, you know, one of the oldest movie franchises... Continue. I think no. I think Godzilla is one like the oldest continuous movie franchise, um, older than James Bond. Uh, sorry, has more movies than James Bond. I think it's older than James Bond too, um, in existence. So boom, there you go. You get to you get to watch some cool shit going on there. So uh, and um, if there's an Alamo uh, Draft House Cinema near you, great place to go. Um, a little pricey if you're on a budget, but, you know, go once every two or three months. Won't hurt your budget too badly, I don't think. So with that being said, um, you, can reach the cha you can reach the channel um, through two ways. First way is via online, um, mrredfoxbsbuster at gmail.com. All right. Or you can reach me at... Twitter on math, uh, Matthew Wesley at Mr. Red Fox 91. You can tweet at me at Mr. Red Fox 91, which is a great way to reach me. You can also find me somewhere on the interwebs. Um, somewhere on the interwebs um, via Discus, so uh, video game facts. You can find me there as well. So that being said, said that's the end of the podcast. Remember, rate, comment, share, subscribe, and peace.